What's up guys, my name is Ace, and yesterday afternoon we got a surprise update in Modern Warfare 3 that I didn't expect, and this actually included a little bit more weapon balancing on top of all of that weapon balancing we got with the Season 6 update. And speaking of that Season 6 update, there was actually a hidden change in that update, which is a massive buff to the Jack Devastators kit for the Reclaimer 18, so I will be covering that toward the end of the video as well. But let's dive into yesterday's update first with the weapon balancing, and we'll start it off with the Static HV. And just to recap from the Season 6, patch, they eliminated our four shot kill potential to the body on the static HV, although you can still get that four shot kill in the maximum damage range if you mix a headshot in, and then they also just combine one of our damage ranges there, so not a massive nerf, however in yesterday's little update they nerfed it a little bit more, all they did here is they reduced the damage multiplier for the upper arms, so it now matches the lower arms as well as lower torso, whereas the upper torso and neck still have a 1.2 times multiplier. Now at the end of the day, in your first two damage ranges, it's going to be a five shot kill anywhere in the lower torso, arms, or upper torso, so it doesn't really matter. And therefore, in the majority of gunfights you should be finding yourself in with the static HV, this isn't really going to change anything. The only time you're ever really going to find a difference here is if you're landing shots like all over the body and certain combinations of different zones could potentially yield one extra shot to kill, but more often than not, it's still going to take you the same number of shots to kill with this gun and I wouldn't say this was a big nerf by any means. Next up, with the Castoff LSW, the brand new LMG, which by the way, my gun guide episode is well underway for that, and that should be coming out tomorrow. With this, they just added missing pros and cons to the Gunsmith UI for stock attachments, so they didn't actually change anything statistically with the gun or any attachments, they just adjusted the menus. Then, diving into the Marksman Rifle category, we finally saw a buff to the crossbow, but it's not quite the buff many of us were hoping for. With this, all they did is they removed aim down sight spread, so now that bolt will be perfectly accurate to where you're aiming. I mean, you still have to compensate for drop and travel time, but it will at least fly perfectly straight from your point of aim, rather than having some of that random deviation mixed in there. Then after that, when it comes to the SAP-50, this one did recently get buffed with the Season 6 update, but it got another buff with yesterday's small updates, and essentially what they did here is they just increased the lower torso damage multiplier to now match the upper torso and arm multiplier, which means in the maximum damage range, it will be a one-shot kill anywhere from the torso up, whereas previously, it wouldn't be a one-shot kill to that lower torso zone. As for the Karak 300 sniper rifle, somebody's got an obsession with this gun over its sledgehammer. I don't know who it is, but they like this gun and they love buffing it, although it's always incremental buffs. We got another one with this small update yesterday, and essentially what they did here is they just increased the maximum damage range up to 25.4 meters, which overlaps and appeared to eliminate that second damage range, and essentially what this means is it's now going to be a one-shot kill anywhere to the torso and up, including the arms, however it's still going to be a hit marker to the hands in my testing. So again, not a massive buff to this, but it is going to be that much more consistent. And then finally with yesterday's little update, the Basilisk got an additional buff as well, and with this, they just increased our leg and foot damage multiplier from 0.9 up to 1, and all this changes is in the minimum damage range. At long ranges, pre-patch, it could be a four-shot kill to the legs, whereas post-patch, it's now just a three-shot kill if you're shooting legs at that distance. Within all of the other damage ranges, nothing really changes here at all, so realistically, this shouldn't actually change anything for you. I mean, if you're challenging gunfights at that range with this gun and hitting legs consistently, you've got bigger problems and you probably shouldn't be using this gun to begin with, but at least it won't take up to four shots to kill now to the legs. And there we go, that wraps it up for yesterday's small weapon balancing update. Most of those changes are really not going to be noticeable at all, but I wanted to make sure I was at least being thorough and covering those. Now, let's dive into the hidden change that came to the Reclaimer 18's Jack Devastator kit, which is the Akimbo Reclaimer 18's that launched, I believe, last week, or maybe it was the week before. I can't remember now, they're all blending together these days. With this, it actually took place with the Season 6 update, so not yesterday's update. And what they did here is they significantly increased our rate of fire, so now our rate of fire matches the semi-auto rate of fire of the Reclaimer 18. And keep in mind, that's the rate of fire per gun, and you can fire both guns at once. And this was a massive buff, because previously, we actually had a slower rate of fire than the pump action version of this gun at just 66 rounds per minute. And this means you can spam these noticeably faster, and on top of this, it fixed that issue where when you fired your gun, there was a huge delay before you could actually swap your gun or perform a few other actions. That has now been fixed as well. And I was curious to see if they made any damage or range adjustments to compensate for this, and as far as I can tell with my testing, they didn't. They just buffed the fire rate. And this means the Jack Devastators are pretty solid now after this update because even if you don't get that two-shot or effectively one-shot kill when you fire both guns at the same time, 
Even if you don't, getting that next shot off is only going to take you 335 milliseconds, which isn't completely outside of the realm of being competitive in this game. And so if you guys haven't tried these Jack Devastators yet since the Season 6 update, give them a shot again. I think you're going to like them a whole lot more than when they first launched. And with that, that's pretty much it when it comes to the multiplayer side of things with yesterday's update. I know they made some adjustments for Warzone as well. I always have people coming to me and saying, hey, didn't they change this gun and that gun too? Just a reminder, I don't play Warzone. I don't cover Warzone at all. This is just a multiplayer channel and I'm only covering the multiplayer updates. And if you are reading through patch notes, just make sure you're paying attention to which patch notes you're looking at, whether that's Warzone or multiplayer. But with that, this is where I'm curious to hear from you guys in those comments down below. First off, how are you guys feeling about this tiny update that we got yesterday for multiplayer with a few minor adjustments to weapons? And then on top of that, how are you guys feeling about the hidden change to the Jack Devastators kit for the Reclaimer 18? Do you guys think that was an appropriate change or maybe did they take it too far? Just let me know down below. If you enjoyed the video, a like rating is always appreciated. And don't forget to subscribe for more if you haven't already. I'll talk to you guys next time.